Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem naming a company. We're given an array of strings which represent a list of names. We're trying to name a company and this is sort of the procedure that we're trying to follow. We wanna choose two distinct names from the list of names. Now, every name in that list is going to be distinct anyway. So maybe they're just trying to confuse us here or they could mean we don't wanna pick the same word twice. But after choosing two names from that list, we'll call them A and B, or rather apple and banana. What we're gonna do is take the first character of each word and then swap them. So the new words we'll have are something like this, where the B goes here and the A goes here. These aren't really real words anymore. But after we swap the first characters of both words, we want to check that both of these words do not exist in the original list of words that we were given. If that's the case, if these are distinct words that do not exist in the input array, then we take these two words and concatenate them. So take this and this and add them together to form one word. And we add that to our result set, or rather that's considered a valid name for the company. And also the reverse would also be, so we would take this and this and then add those together like in the opposite order. That would also be considered a valid name. So every time we find a pair of words like this, we can consider both orderings of those two words. And so building up that list of valid names for the company, what we're gonna end up returning is not the names actually themselves, but the count of the distinct valid names for the company. So the brute force solution of this problem is actually pretty basic, but to actually get the more optimal solution, it takes some pretty important observations and it's definitely not easy. So I'll try to explain like the thought process behind getting to that. But first let's start with a brute force solution because it is kind of valuable. Suppose we have like a list of words. These are our three words. What we wanna do is try every single combination. So we would have a nested loop, which is gonna be n squared, where n, let's say, is the number of words that we have. So looking at every pair of words, we would basically just make that check. We'd swap the first character of each word, check if they don't exist in the input set of words. If not, then we increment our count by two and probably add those two words to like some hash set so that we can identify duplicates in the future or not the words, but the concatenation of them. And then we would probably do that for every single pair of words. Now this is not gonna be super efficient in terms of, now that's not too bad, but it's gonna be n squared times probably like the average length of each word. Let's say that's W because we are gonna have to perform like those character swaps and then check if that word exists maybe in some hash set. So this is gonna be the time complexity it's not bad, which is what makes this problem hard, that we can do better than that. And it really just has to do with noticing some observations about this. Let's take a look at this example. First observation is pretty simple. Look at these two words. What would happen if we were trying our brute force solution from earlier? We took this T and then this T and then swapped them together. What resulting words would we get? Pretty much the exact same words. This would still be time, this would still be toffee because swapping two first characters that are the exact same is not gonna change anything. That's really obvious once you know it, but you probably wouldn't look for that observation, but it's actually important in getting to the optimal solution. So the first thing is two words with the same first character are never going to do anything for us. Time already exists in the input set, so creating this word doesn't do anything. Same with this word, they already exist in the input set. So we don't care to compare words with the same first character. So maybe it'll be good to break up this list of words into sets that group them together based on the first character. Okay, now let's take a look at these two words. What happens if we swap their first characters together? What happens if we put the T over here and we put the C over here? Down here, we get the word coffee. Up here, we get the word toffee. Both of those words already existed in the input set. So once again, in that case, 
We don't care to compare words like these together. But what do we mean by words like these? Why did that happen? Notice anything uh, special about these two words? Well, they do have different first characters, but their suffix, every character after that, is the exact same. So doesn't it make sense that that's always going to happen? If we have two words with the exact same suffix, why would swapping their first characters result in a new word? We're just going to get the opposite word. We're going to get coffee down here and toffee up here. But both of those words already exist in the input set. So once again, that's not like a crazy complicated observation, but using these two observations, and this is going to be the hard part, we can come up with something clever that will allow us to solve this problem more efficiently without too much repeated work. I added another word to this set just to make things more interesting, but Given these three sets, this is how we're going to group the words together. Probably we'll use a hash map and use the first character of each word as the key and then create a grouping or rather just a list and then create a list of words or actually instead of a list, we're going to use a hash set for reasons I'll show in just a second. But this is going to be a hash set. This is going to be a hash set and this is going to be a hash set and the key for this is going to be the first character. So this is going to be C. This is going to be D. This is going to be T. Now we're going to iterate through these in still a nested loop, but notice something about that nested loop. We're going to first not uh, iterate word by word. We're going to go group by group. So we're going to have one pointer I that's going to iterate through every group. And then we're going to have another pointer J that's going to iterate through every other group. So yeah, we have a nested loop, but how many groups do we have? We don't have N groups. N is the list of words in the input set. We took those words and grouped them together. How many characters are in the English alphabet. Well, there's 26 lowercase characters and I think that's the restriction on these words. They're going to be made up of these 26 characters. So we can only have 26 groups at most. So this nested for loop that we're going to have is not going to be n squared. It's going to be 26 squared, which might be a big number, but it's not huge and it's still a constant number. This nested for loop is going to be O of 1. But inside of that nested for loop, we are going to have some additional work that's going to go on. Suppose this is our first group and suppose that this is our second group. As we are iterating through, we want to count how many valid words can be created from these two groups. We already know that these words start with a different character than these words but we don't know how many of these words have a suffix that matches a suffix in these words. Or rather, what we're trying to do is count the number of distinct suffixes in this set of words and the number of distinct suffixes in this set of words. First of all, how many are there in this set? Just one, the word cafe, because afe is not in this set, and afi is in the other set down here. Afi is in both of these words, but I'm is unique. So we have one distinct word down here, or rather one distinct suffix and one distinct suffix up here. So that means the only valid words we can create are using this word along with this word. So only by taking these two words and concatenating them together can we create a valid word. We would take the time, and we would swap the first character out. So it would be C-I-M-E. And then for cafe, we'd have the T that goes first. And this is what one of the valid words would look like. And also the opposite would be moving this to the beginning. And that's also a valid word. So we can only create two valid words from this. The way we get that is basically by multiplying this number and multiplying this number and then multiplying that by two. If we had an additional word down here, like uh, maybe Tim, then in that case, we could take this Tim and also concatenate it with cafe. And we could also take the ordering of them and swap them. So in that case, we'd have two distinct words down here and one distinct word up here. So we do two times one and then multiplying that by two because we can swap the order. But notice how if we try to take toffee and then concatenate it with cafe, that's not going to result in a valid word because yes, we'd put the T over here. So it wouldn't be cafe anymore. It'd be taffe. Yeah, that's a word that doesn't exist in the input set. It's true, but we would take the C from here and then 
put that down here. So this word would be coffee. So this word already exists in the input set over here. And what we are told is after we concatenate the two words, both of the new names, the first word and the second word must not be in the original set. So that's why we're doing it this way. And that is pretty much the entire idea behind the problem. Now, the last thing I didn't talk about was among two groups of words, how would we count the number of distinct words in this set and the number of distinct words in this set? Well, not words, I meant suffixes, but how would we do that? How would we count the distinct suffixes in each set? It's not too hard because another thing I didn't mention when we're storing these groups of words, since we already have the key over here, C is mapped to these words, D is mapped to these words, we actually don't need to store the first character of each word. So just to make things easier for us, that's probably what we would do, store it like this. The easiest way to count the distinct suffixes would be to, for example, just iterate through this set. Suppose we're trying to count distinct from this and this. We would just iterate through this set of suffixes, check. Does this suffix exist in this set? Does this suffix exist in this set? Yes. So what we're doing here is counting the uh, suffixes that do exist in both sets. And we only have to iterate through this to know that because if they exist in both sets, they're going to show up in this set as well. But so we counted one suffix that exists in both of the sets. So then what we would do is say this set has two words in it minus the duplicate. Therefore, there's one suffix that is distinct. Same up here. We have two words minus one that is a duplicate. And then we have one suffix that's unique. So that's how we would get the count for both of these. The time complexity of that operation, that's going to be the bottleneck. The time complexity of that is just iterating through one set of words. I guess in the worst case, it could be a uh, big O of N because assuming that all the sets are evenly divided, we'd have N divided by 26, but it's still a constant, so it doesn't do anything. So that would still be O of N, where that's like the number of words in our input. And then we already talked about how we have a nested loop that is 26 squared, but the time complexity of this is still big O of N. So with all that said, now let's code it up. So the first thing we're gonna do is map every first character to the list of suffixes that start with that character. So we're gonna have a word map and I'm gonna use a default dict in Python and the default value I'm gonna give it is a hash set. So now we're gonna iterate through every word in the input list of words, and we're gonna use the first character of that word as the key. So we're gonna say word map using this first character. We're gonna to add to the hash set this word, but we probably just want the suffix so we can start at character one and then go until the end of that word. The fact that this is a default dict with a hash set default value means that if we try to index this, and we haven't already used this as a key before, it will use like an empty hash set. So then we can add the word to it. Then what we want to do is go through every possible first character in word map and we want the combination. So we want every other possible first character in that word map. An alternative to this would be because we know there's only 26 possible values that this could be anyway. So we could iterate 26 times, one for each character. But I prefer to do it this way because then you don't have to worry about like ASCII values and things like that. But there is a case where both of these first characters could be the same the way we're doing it here. So I want to check for that. If they're both the same, then we want to skip because we know we're not going to get any words like that anyway. There's not going to be any valid words for reasons we talked about earlier. But if that's not the case, then we want to count the number of distinct suffixes. We're going to have a variable. Actually, I'm going to call it intersect because we want like the intersection. That's what this is going to be, the number of duplicates. And we can get that by going through every suffix. I'll use W to abbreviate for that. So for going through every suffix that start with this character, character one. And if that word is also in word map that starts with character two, that suffix. So that means that this is a duplicate suffix. So we want to count that because we're going to use that count, that intersection of duplicates to get the number of distinct. So we're just going to say intersect plus one. There is a way to write this more concisely in Python. 
You can Google intersection of lists if you want to. It's basically just taking this and this and putting like the and symbol. But I think this is a bit more universal and you could translate this into other languages more easily. But now we want to know the number of distinct suffixes in the first set. We can get that by getting the number of words in the first set, just like this, and then subtract from it the number of intersections, the number of duplicates. And we'll do the exact same thing for the second set of words and use the other key for that. And then finally, to count the number of valid words we can create, we're gonna take the number of distinct in number one, multiply by the number of distinct in number two, and then add that to our result, which I don't think I've declared yet, but we'll do it up here. We'll set our result initially equal to zero. And the reason here I'm not multiplying this by two because the way we're iterating through this, suppose we had three like starting words. We could start with A, we could start with B or start with C. The way these nested loops are gonna work is the first time character one might be A, character two is gonna be A, we're gonna skip that, then it's gonna be B, then it's gonna be C. Then next time character one is gonna be B, but character two is not just gonna iterate through these two values. Character two is still gonna iterate through all of them. So if character one is at B, character two will still go to A again. So basically the two words will be in reverse order. So we don't have to worry about taking this and multiplying it by two because those opposite cases are gonna be handled by the for loop anyway. It's just something you have to keep in mind. I don't blame you if you'd rather write this the other way where you just iterate 26 times, one for each character. You can do it based on like what you prefer. But after that, all we have to do is return the result. Whoops, I should have added an S over here. Okay, now let's run it. And as you can see, it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.